This podcast is brought to you by Deepbridge Capital LLP. Deepbridge is authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Please note that investments discussed are both illiquid and high risk and won't be suitable for all investors and should be considered as part of a diversified portfolio. The content of this podcast should not be construed as financial or taxation advice. We recommend investors seek appropriate professional financial advice. Any views expressed may no longer be current and may have already been acted upon. Welcome to this Deepbridge Discovery podcast. My name is Andrew Aldridge. I'm partner and head of marketing at Deepbridge Capital. The aim of these podcasts is to bring to life the investments and the venture capital world that Deepbridge Capital is involved in. I'm delighted today to be joined by my colleague, Dr. Savas Niafitu, who is partner and head of life sciences at Deepbridge Capital. So, Savas, thank you for joining us today. And uh, can we maybe kick off by just uh, you telling us a little bit about your background prior to Deepbridge? How long do you have? You could be here all day. Um, you, well, I can't say the things that you learned at university and things like that, so they're, they're too big a word, so you'll have to do this yourself. Do you want me to draw a picture? Absolutely. Go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a degree in, in pharmacology uh, at Manchester University, so th- that was my my foray into into the world of, of uh, pharmaceuticals and um, had really good schooling uh, there. It's one of best pharmacology schools in 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 the country um and um you know really good good time to be in manchester in the early 90s um you know through uh, the advent of uh, manchester etc um, and you say that as a proud scouser as well don't you I, I, i've been i've been called a lot worse yes <laughs> i do live in liverpool so um, um although you can guess from my accent i'm not a native of liverpool <laughs> and then i did a phd at uh, nottingham university um Foolishly, I uh, turned down the opportunity. Not even my kids believe this. To uh, to do a PhD at Cambridge uh, to go and join Prof Marston because uh, he was, you know, really the guy to work uh, alongside in in the area of psychopharmacology in the UK. He uh, brought into the country a particularly interesting technique to study neurotransmitters in the brain, and uh, that was always fascinating me. So uh, I did that. Went to Nottingham. And uh, got my PhD. And then what after your uh, your qualifications? Um, I, you know, after my PhD, I you know I was uh, all set on following a career in, a career in academia. I, uh, I had a J one visa to go over to the US for a, a postdoctoral research project at um, in, in Boston, and um, I was you know all set to do that, um, and almost. Um, by coincidence, really, uh, I, you know, as a, as, a, as a poor student, I was turning up to milk round presentations and uh, um, for the free wine and food, and uh, picked up a couple of um, application packs and applied to you know a few investment banks. And to my surprise, I ended up getting getting a few interviews, and um, they kept calling people back and had multiple rounds of interviews. And uh, the Mary Lynch one was particularly interesting. Uh, we had about five or six rounds and a whole day of selection um, put us up in a swanky hotel in in, uh, in Mayfair and uh, you know a bunch of 22 23 24 year old kids uh, let loose in Mayfair um, you had a bit expenses of fun, account it was Pace great yeah it was great but yeah literally the week before I was due to fly out to to Boston uh, I had an offer from JP Morgan and uh, um, I Sort of had a, a, a good a good long think about what I wanted to do and, and realized that actually influencing science at, at the level of, of the bench was great it was you know really exciting but you know to actually have a better probability of, of, of having an impact um, if you could if you could have uh, an understanding of the world of finance you could influence multiple projects rather than just the on project that you were involved in so I just thought I'll go and, and, and give a go for three years yep. <laughs> and, and, and leave. And uh, 20, 22 years later, I'm still there. That's how most careers start, isn't it? Yeah, try to leave for a few years and get get uh, get, get uh, addicted to it. But yeah, Good. true enough. So JP Morgan's where you started, and then kind of what was uh, what was your career like after that? And where, where did you go? Where yeah, did you go? JP Morgan. Uh, I was lucky enough to to be part of their M and A team. Uh, um, and um, I think eventually they discovered or realised that I had a PhD in, in, in biomedical science, so they thought I'd better actually specialise in that in, in corporate finance. Um, and after that, I worked in, 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 in a number of areas within equity capital markets, um, place which is now uh, no longer um, an investment bank. 
um, as a result of uh, the um, uh, 2008 um, um, you know, credit crunch and, and the aftermath of that Bear Stearns, uh, which was a big old Wall Street investment bank at the time, um, and uh, eight years uh, at Pamio Gordon, and um, sort of that was the sort of longest period of time, um, led you know, one of the biggest IPOs. At the time, it was difficult to actually do IPOs of biotechs uh, in the UK, led one of the biggest IPOs in, in, in the UK market at the time, and yeah, just you know, got a lot of deals under my belt and, and, and uh, learned the way of the city, um, you know, across various areas. And you were nominated for various awards during that period as well, I believe. I, I, I did all right, I suppose. Too, too humble to mention, obviously, <laughs> aren't you, Seb? I, I think if you're, uh, if, if you're there long enough, you get nominated for a few things. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and then, obviously, kind of after Pamela Gordon, you've also kind of done your own kind of uh, digital tech startups and uh, and things like that. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, that was when I learned there's a difference between uh, cutting edge and bleeding edge. <laughs> um, I, I remember living um, uh, Pamela Gordon and um, co-founding and being the CEO of a, uh, a telemedicine uh, company um, and um, go, going around to do sort of fundraising uh, with you know, a lot of the VCs. And I was told that um, you, you really couldn't do uh, medicine over a, over a smartphone, I mean, you know, you need to actually see people and, uh, I mean, it only took a pandemic to prove people Absolutely. wrong, uh, but it was, uh, you know, it was certainly a, a, an interesting time. Uh, it, you know, it was definitely, as we know now, the right thing to be doing. Uh, you, you know, we have a supply and demand imbalance uh, in, 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 in healthcare um, and to carry on doing the same thing over and over again and expecting that, um, it, you know, it will be a good outcome in the end is just... It's it's it's, uh, it, it's 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 not uh, it's not a sane attitude to have. So, trying to introduce some form of technology into that is definitely what we were trying to achieve at the time. I was lucky enough to have um, the likes of Ben Carter, who is with us uh, here at Deep Bridge now, um, as my uh, chief commercial officer, and uh, you know a good tech team that we put together to sort of build build the app. Uh, but it was definitely you know at the time when a lot of people were doubting whether you could you could do telemedicine so after kind of uh, kind of uh, delving into the world of startups and, and what have you kind of what then brought you to deep bridge and kind of what was the, the driver there i'd known ian uh, warwick for uh, um, uh, you know a long time prior to actually joining deep bridge and um, you know we'd always talked about his ambitions to have a, a life sciences uh, business and uh, you know he, he you know he was a guy that really believed in 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 the application of new technologies in in, in solving big problems of the world and and healthcare as we as we all know is, is is a big problem it takes up a huge proportion of the world GDP even even you know in pre pandemic uh, times you know. and that's gone through the roof in the last uh, eighteen months two years yeah indeed yeah um, uh, the, you know and, and it's not just because GDP is not you know, grown because of the pandemic, but um, yeah, you know, in the US, he was pushing up towards it. You know, twenty percent of, of US GDP was spent in healthcare, and Europe it was more like ten percent. The UK, uh, you know, around about that sort of eight to nine percent. Um, so you have to you you have to be aware that that's a big part of the economy and and and, and the application of, of of new solutions, that be it being new medicines or new diagnostics or new bit of kit or equipment or, or, or even, you know, broad technology in, 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 uh, in, in, in health tech yeah. is really something that, um, you know, appealed to Ian and, um, yeah, the timing was right. Uh, I exited uh, my uh, telemedicine business at the time and, and uh, it was the right time in you know, January 2016 to come, to come and join Ian to set up the life science business. Fantastic. So what were your kind of, what were your... I don't know dreams or ambitions of of the Deep Bridge Life Sciences team when you were when you were founding it uh, several years ago. Well, survived to the fifth of April initially. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, joking joking aside, it was um, you know I'd, I'd obviously known you know investments on the other side as as agent um, being in investment banking or or responsible being being an entrepreneur, but actually being in a place where. You know, you had a, 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 a lump of money which needed to be 
deployed because people don't give you the money and expect you to sit on it. They want yep. it to be put to work and put it to, qu- to work quickly. Um, and, and making sure you're making the right investment decisions, making sure you've got a process in place, making sure that you build pipelines to allow you to actually have good decisions, good investment decisions to make. Th- those were the things which um, you know occupied me. You know, what you would say, putting one foot in front of the other, rather than you know have some big plan for world domination. It was just making sure that we had the right infrastructure in place to allow us to make investment decisions. Building those foundations, I mm. guess, then to grow. So you, you mentioned kind of getting deal flow in and, and companies uh, t- ready to invest. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think most people will understand that we've got some great life sciences companies in our portfolio. Where do you find those companies from, or how do they come to, to your door, Deepbridge's door? Well, initially, we'd turn up at the uh, at the opening of an envelope, as I keep saying. It, it was all about getting out there, and uh, you know, whether it was accelerators, whether it was um, you know, speaking to tech transfer teams at universities, um, talking to uh, you know other entrepreneurs and their networks, and accessing uh, you know other VCs and and and, and trying to uh, you know get in on some of their pipeline and, and syndicate with them, it, you know, it was all about really speaking to people. It's not, you know, it's, 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 there's no there's no secrets, there's no deep secrets in building pipeline. You've just got to be active out there speaking to people. It's graft and meeting the right people and talking to the right people. Um, so you've obviously now got a life sciences team. Obviously you came in as, as number one in that team. But uh, can you just tell us a little bit about your team and kind of uh, their specialisms and, and kind of what that means for you as a, as, as a team, as a collective? Yeah, uh, we're very fortunate to have good people at um, at, at Deepbridge, you know, right across. Uh, but you know, in life sciences in particular, um, you know, we've got you know, it's a it's a it's a small team, um, but uh, each person has got their own um, areas of, of of expertise, and and um, they all just work really well together. And 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 uh, I'm really proud of the work they're doing. So, you know, without wanting to sort of embarrass <laughs> them individually, but uh, yeah, you know, each one of them. Um, Heather, you know, is our is our organizer. Without her, we just uh, wouldn't know what uh, what what day it was. And uh, we've got Alison, who's got a degree, uh, uh, you know, from Oxford University, and and, and uh, understands those long big words that some sometimes bamboozle people in in life sciences. And Ben has got an amazing background in in commercializing life sciences technologies and having taken a number of them from sort of sales of zero to sales of millions of pounds in in previous jobs having being himself a, 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 a you know a ceo of a startup having been chief commercial officer with me prior to that in telemedicine and um, you know we've got really good um you know really good sort of complementary skills across the board and then am I right in thinking that when, in order to make sure that we've got the coverage on the board seats of investee companies, et cetera, you've now got a team of kind of non-execs that we turn to depending on skill sets. Is, is that how it works? Yeah, indeed. We've got a, um, you know, sort of a, a portfolio of directors. It's not, um, it's not a particularly novel principle. Uh, but yeah, these are people that uh, we've known you know, over the years with, with necessary skills, not just in the various verticals, but, you know, obviously across their ability to sort of interact with with people, or you know, in, you know, bring in certain skills, um, be it sort of actual knowledge of sort of commercializing things, or regulatory uh, aspects, or you know, the ability to understand legal contracts or licensing, um, you know, products. So you know, depending on on, on fit, uh, we do turn to those people, and they take up a, a role as best being the deepest director on so the company. right skill set for the right company depending what they need exactly yeah. great um so just kind of looking back at your your last few years at deepbridge um kind of are there any kind of particular highlights from that time that, that stand out to you the you know I, I guess um you know every 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 day is a different it's a different challenge and um and and uh, you know there's not there's not um there's not a lot of repetition in this job, um, well, other than the uh, reading of um, legal contracts and <laughs> all these agreements. Uh, the bane you know, of your life. Yeah, well, you know, I think the bane of every, uh, you know, every investor, but, but they are a necessary evil. Um, you know, I, I guess some of the some of the successes we've had is being able to, you know, steer companies um, from vapor stage to, you know, which is you know, you know really sort of having come to us with nothing other than just an idea on a piece of paper to be scaling commercially and um and and and, and being able to 
you know, really being, being, at, being at a point to attract serious amounts of or transformative investment to be able to sort of take them through, you know, through to a position which which uh, exit can be considered. But you know, in all, in all of that, it's it's really the little victories that you you, you know you remember, and um, you, you know, some of them uh, you know, would have been around uh, periods of time when you just had to sort of you know stand stand your ground and and um, you know where where, where you know, an idea or a, an investment uh, was not particularly going well and you had to just go back to the basics and say well why is it that we made that investment why is it that that hasn't quite worked and what is it that we need to do um, to, to to make that into a success because you know life and investments is not always a straight line you've got to you know, roll your sleeves up and actually try and, and make things happen, and that th- those are the little things. And I don't want to sort of mention any examples, but you know, those that that know uh, know there's there's some there's some good companies in our portfolio, but the ones that have been the most um, pleasing uh, to us and the team is the ones we've had to sort of roll our sleeves up and really make some critical changes to to keep them going. I guess it's sometimes been the, the voice of reason. I guess isn't it when when all things are going off around you and uh, you're the one as the VC to say, well, actually, get back to basics. How do we take this forward? What are the next steps? And, uh, and being that voice of reason, I guess. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I guess um, you know we can overcomplicate um, um, venture. We can overcomplicate early stage investments, but, but 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 you know, common sense goes a long way. Um, and uh, you know, it's easy to say. I've been there myself as an entrepreneur. When you are, you know, when when you're on, on, on or, or near the coal face, it is difficult sometimes to, to to see the wood from the trees. So, having someone that can sort of stand back and 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 just say, "Well, look, you know, um, you know, let, let's not overcomplicate things. Let's just go back to basics. Let's do A, B, and C, and, and see where it comes out." You know, my my team, our philosophy is all about not making too many too many assumptions. So we, we we like to have to run experiments to prove certain ideas, um, and it's difficult to do that, um, in, in particularly in drug in, in drug discovery, where the life cycle um, uh, of technologies is so long, and 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 it takes so long to 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 uh, take th- things through testing and uh, through to registration. But you have to do it to make an assumption that because you've had a bright idea, the whole world is going to think it's a bright idea. It just doesn't work. Yeah, I think I remember um, talking to yourself and Ian, you know, a few years ago when we were talking about um, kind of at what stage did Deepbridge like to invest? And it's that kind of stage where things aren't just a good idea. You, know, you take away the assumptions that somebody's come up with a great idea for a bit of tech or a, or a med tech or whatever it might be. Uh, but it's got to be beyond that. It's got to be beyond just being a good idea, whether that's commerciality or whether that be clinical trials or whatever it is. And I guess that's kind of a, a, a crucial to you guys. It is. It, it's a slightly schizophrenic existence because in, 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 in our SEIS products, you know, you do often just back good ideas. We try and sort of see things that have got IP or at least have the prospect of getting some IP, a protectable position. But in reality, it, you know, when you're when you're putting sort of Series A type of money, uh, one to five million, you do need to see a bit beyond the proof of concept. And I guess that's a key differentiator between SEIS investing and EIS investing is that hopefully when it pro- if a company progresses to EIS fundraising that they've got a little bit more traction and they've gone through that kind of initial uh, assumption testing right right it, you know and and again it is difficult it's different different between tech and, and life sciences um but it, it, even in life sciences you you need to go beyond proof of principle um you, you know it's got to be proof of concept it's, you know you've got to be able to sort of have something a bit more than just well, you know this is a good idea this is what we're going to do try and solve that yeah you know who you know? Who have you spoken in the trade that also thinks that's a good idea? You know, who who's going to be your customer? What's you going to be? You know, what's your business model going to be? You know, test all of those hypotheses and try and find a good a good business model. Yeah, brilliant. One of the highlights of you, of you being at Deepbridge obviously has been uh, recently you uh, were awarded the Most Valuable Player Award at the Growth Investor Awards. Um, yeah, that. That's that's great for for Deepbridge and really shows, I guess, the importance of life sciences. Um, is is that kind of how you took it? Obviously, it, it means you're great, self. Um, but uh, you know, is that kind of a potential recognition of how important life sciences now is in in the investment uh, in the VC world? Yeah, no, I think you had it right the first time. I am great. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, look, at, you know, we, the, the, the awards. The, the 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 nice to have and and uh, you know you can make uh, uh, you know some noise around that and it sort of 
you know it is it is a positive uh, reinforcer uh, to what you do. But uh, anyone who's in business will tell you that that you know it's all rear view mirror, um, and 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 often you know you sort of stand there and you think, you know, gosh, you know, I've been awarded this for things which happened sort of six or months ago or a year ago. And the world has moved on so much and we've got, you know, and it's almost embarrassing to sort of say, oh, you know, thank you. Um, but wait until you see what I've got coming up. Um, but the reality is, is that, you know, and everyone will say this, although that's an individual award, I, I wouldn't be there receiving that if it wasn't for the team. And, and, and uh, you know, I say that with every conviction I have, you know, if it wasn't for Heather, I wouldn't even know you know, how to start my day. I wouldn't know what I'm doing next. You wouldn't next. have made it to the award ceremony. I, pro- I probably wouldn't know. Um, you know, really, she's my, you know, you know, ears and, and eyes and, and um, we, without her, we wouldn't function. Um, you know, have, not having Alison around to be able to, you know, keep us all on track and ask those difficult questions when it comes to understanding some science or, you know, even, you know, her her, her common sense and and, 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 and an increased ability to sort of you know figure out with, with good business now where we need to go I, again you know things just wouldn't function i wouldn't have the time to be able to you know spend the quality time with the portfolio company to try and and, and make those you know little steps that they need to 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 go to go forward and and, and ben is just you know a, a, a force on nature um you know he's anyone that has worked with him and you know he knows that um we'll, we'll edit that bit out stuff it's fine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I, mean, I mean you know that you know he's just you know he's a, he's a whirlwind he you know he's got you know so much energy and uh delves into you know but but you know he's, be, he's been around when we're recruiting new ceos so you know doing interviews he's you know he's there doing some of the early stage due diligence he's there set you know actually helping ceos Put down the business plan, the commercial plan. You, you know he, you know he is a, a really unique individual, and we're very lucky to have him. Um, you know the team is why we win awards, whether they're individual uh, individual awards or whether they're you know collective awards. Yeah, I think it is also as well the uh, the recognition that uh, you yeah, know Deepbridge was the first fund to launch a life sciences EIS fund um, and really put a focus on that market, which. You know, over the last couple of years has really come to the fore and I think uh, you know that's uh, I think testament to kind of the foresight that, that you and Ian had to basically start an EIS fund and uh, that specialised in life sciences so I think that's uh, you know, testament to that as much as anything as well but uh, um, so kind of looking forward you, you mentioned that that uh, you know things move on quickly in, 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 in all worlds but particularly in in VC and, and what you're doing so kind of what are your hopes for the next 12 24 36 months kind of what's the future look like I mean, it's difficult to to make too many predictions, but um, you know we are. I can guarantee you're going to have some some um, failures, and we're going to have some businesses that um, uh, succeed, and and we, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, in, in, in on, on balance, we'll have more successes than failures. Um, you know, what I'd like to see is we have a, a, a number of our portfolio companies, three or four of them, that are taking in transformative investments, um, in, including ones from. From other VCs, what is going to be the challenge now is for those businesses to understand that it's just the start of their journey, rather than uh, you know thinking they've made it, and and to try and and and, and make those plans and execute, um, because you know transformative amount to uh, amount of capital to to lead to commercialization is is all well and good, but again life is not uh, or very very seldom is in a straight line. And you have to execute those plans. You have to get to the next juncture uh, in a stronger position than, than you were. So what I'm looking for is, you know, maybe one or two of those companies to make the right sort of progress, get products over to some big, you know, global markets like the US, uh, and uh, hopefully a, a couple of them will get to exit. Brilliant. Good. Well, we look forward to uh, catching up with you on a future podcast to, to hear more about that. Um, so kind of away from work and, uh, you know, Tell us a bit more about who Sav is. I mean, kind of what are your personal interests away from work? Oh, I've, I've, you know, um, it's obviously as you can as you can tell, not not telling of jokes. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> that goes that, without saying. Yes, I'll brush up on that for the next one. I'll, uh, I'll you know, I'll have a few more uh, humorous lines. I, you know, I, I'm busy enough with with work, and um, uh, you know, as some of you know, I, 
you know enjoy going for a going for a run um that's you know that's how i sort of clear my head and uh, i try and do that regularly and and um you know i used to do that in my in my 20s a lot and uh you know it's good to be able to 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 do that um my kids uh, have four children um and they have various interests and uh, so you know typical of, of of anyone with young children your dad's taxi taking them here there and everywhere um the, the, you know three of the children do do fencing they, they uh, fence epe um which means that um again i'll be taking them to competitions and um and, and helping out and that, that actually sort of brought me to a role you know, trying you know to help with the organisation of the Commonwealth uh, Championships, which is happening in in in, in August next year. Um, they they needed someone that understood uh, finance, so I, I put, you know put my hand up, and uh, they they asked me to you know to sort of help out with that. So hopefully that that's uh, that's going to sort of go smoothly. Um, it, it's obviously a, a very uncertain world that we live in, but uh, you know the preparation is great, and we're trying to. Uh, Give a really good experience to the athletes where, wherever they come from. Commonwealth, the, the Commonwealth is is a is a, a, a really wonderful institution, and and uh, and and having these championships in the UK is going to be an amazing thing. Excellent, very good. Um, so, without uh, for copyright reasons, you, we're not going to take you to a desert island. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, can you just uh, share with us kind of your favourite book, your favourite film, and your favourite song or album? Yeah, I mean, when you <laughs> when you've got business people talking about um you know favorite books or whatever you know people will just say oh jack wells and the ge way uh, none of that um i think it's fair to say as a as a as a as an ex-scientist i guess um I, I you know i i was sort of a logical person and uh you know probably one of my my weaknesses was lack of imagination so uh, it, you know when whenever Whenever I read, um, you know, good books that allowed me to sort of open my my horizons, that those were the kind of things that stuck to mind. So um, um, there's a, a really nice book of short stories by a guy called Will Self. Um, uh, it's called Grey Area. I guess that is probably um, you know just sort of dystopian sort of short stories. Um, it's an amazing book and um, pro- probably not particularly fashionable. It's a sort of a niche thing, uh, but um, yeah, that, that I would say that's a that's a really good book. So apologies. Uh, Jack Welch, because I'm sure he's um, he, you know he's listening in. <laughs> Absolutely, but, uh, no accent. And then in terms of film, kind of what's uh, what's your go to film? Um, again, you know, I'd love my uh, the, the, you know sort of almost sort of fantasy world uh, type stuff. Um, you, know, my, my, uh, you know, anything to do with the, the, the you know New York and you know and, and, and sort of you know things like the mafia and stuff like that. So Goodfellas is a particular favorite of mine um love that but you know again i also love you know sort of you know fantasies like um, avatar for example so yeah very good and then uh on to music kind of what's your what's your go-to uh album or song or playlist or, or what, what are you uh what's what's your go-to oh playlist that's uh <laughs> not not the full list of playlists but yeah I, I was trying to sound a bit more modern just saying album because because a lot of people these days wouldn't know what an album is so. yeah no well my kids struggle with that um especially when i actually show them those shiny little discs and yeah. uh, so yeah cds you put them in there and uh I, you know I, I have a very very um um taste in music um and um you know from heavy metal but you know i would say probably one of those sort of formative albums is um metallica's known as the black album but actually the title is not the black album it, it's called metallica that's yeah. one of the favorite um back to black with amy winehouse again very different sort of you know artists but those you know really great sounds um and uh yeah i've also been known to to listen to um you know scala radio and classical music and uh yeah so it, it, you know varied i know what i like but when it's tax year <laughs> ends you know that you're trying to get those deals across the line to make sure everyone all the clients money is deployed before tax year end uh metallica that's what's kind of getting you pumped up in the morning is, is that what it is yeah to t- tax year end. i mean i thought this was a family p- podcast you know <laughs> you, you don't want a, 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 a split to coming out yeah metallica is probably 
Fantastic. Well, Sav, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, yeah, we look forward to catching up with you again in future and uh, seeing kind of progress with some of our companies. But uh, hopefully uh, that gives everyone a bit of an insight into to who you are as a person uh, and uh, yeah, why you are absolutely the right person to be uh, leading uh, kind of the only life sciences EIS fund in the market, um, which uh, yeah, is, uh, is a great, uh, great kind of uh, thing to be doing. So brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this latest podcast. Um, if you have any queries or any topics you'd like us to cover in a future podcast, please email us at discovery at deepbridgecapital.com and we'll be uh, certainly interested in looking at those going forward. We look forward to seeing you at the next podcast. Thank you. This podcast was brought to you by Deepbridge Capital LLP. Deepbridge is authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Please note that investments discussed are both illiquid and high risk and won't be suitable for all investors and should be considered as part of a diversified portfolio. The content of this podcast should not be construed as financial or taxation advice. We recommend investors seek appropriate professional financial advice. Any views expressed may no longer be current and may have already been acted upon.